Hello and welcome back to the Photography Made Simple podcast. Today I'm going to give you some tips for using a 50mm f1.8 lens, whether that be the version from Canon or from Nikon or for anyone else for that matter. Really what we're talking about is an entry-level, inexpensive 50mm lens. So today I'm going to share with you how you can use one of those lenses and get the sharp awesome images it's capable of. Hey there, I'm Audrianne, founder of Live Snap Love, and I'm on a mission to help photographers just like you grow their photography skills quickly and in a way that feels simple and easy so you can shorten the learning curve and get photos you love faster. I created this Photography Made Simple podcast to share simple, actionable techniques, helpful insights and practical advice on all things photography. So if you're itching to take your photos to the next level, whatever that level may be, you're in the perfect place. So let's get started. Now I know that many of you will have either the Canon 50mm f1.8 or the Nikon version because it's probably the lens that most people go for when they're upgrading from their kit lens. The reason being is relatively inexpensive compared to the price of other lenses. The focal length is really useful on both a full frame or a crop frame camera. It's small, it's lightweight, but also because it is a great little lens for the price. Now, this was certainly the lens I started out with. So I got the Canon 50mm f1.8 along with the Tamron 28-75. to So when I upgraded, I wanted to have one zoom lens and one prime lens so I could see which one I preferred. And that was the two that I got, the Canon 50mm and the Tamron 28-75. to But the one I was most excited about getting was the 50mm because I had kept hearing about the quality of the lens for the price how tack sharp my images were going to be compared to the kit lens. But unfortunately, it didn't quite work out like that. A lot of my images from that time just looked really soft or the focus wasn't where I wanted it. So the lens got shoved back into my camera bag and pretty much forgotten for a while while I focused on the tram run. But I'm not one to give up easily, especially when that thing costs $125. So I took a little bit more time to figure it out. And I'm so glad I did because it really truly is an amazing lens for the price. You do just have to know how to get the best out of it. But before I tell you how to do that, I have a little request. I'd love for you to share this podcast with other people who would find it valuable. So really quick, if you have a photographer friend who's not yet listening to Photography Made Simple, please grab a link and just tell them about it. So if you have anyone who you think this would be really useful for, please share it with them because it will be great for us both and both of us will thank you for it. Okay, so I'm not going to tease you any longer. Let's get into our seven tips for using the 50mm lens. So the first one, which is arguably the most important one, is don't use f1.8 just because you can. Now, I know how tempting it is, especially if you've come from using the kit lens where your maximum aperture might have been f5.6 or f4 or f3.5 and you get this lens that can open all the way up to f1.8. So what many photographers do and myself included is they tend to shoot everything at f1.8. Now the problem with this is the depth of field can be so narrow at this aperture that it then becomes extremely difficult to get the area you want in focus. And all you'll end up with is a ton of unusable shots. So for example, if you were taking a portrait image at f1.8, you will notice that you'll frequently get another area in focus rather than the eye. For example, the nose or the eyebrow or even the tip of the eyelashes. So you have something else sharp in the frame, but not the eye that you were going for. Another common situation, again, with a portrait is if you don't have your subject facing you directly, so they're turned slightly away from the camera, you will 
see that you'll get the eye closest to the camera to be razor sharp. And then the eye behind is very soft, even though it is only out of being on the same focal plane by a mere centimeter or two. So that certainly happened to me. So if you look back at my images from around that time, I have loads of images where we've got one eye sharp and the other one soft. And that's because I was shooting everything at f1.8. So my advice to you would be to use a slightly higher F number. I would suggest around F2.8 and you will still throw the background out of focus and get lots of nice creamy bokeh, but I guarantee you'll get more of your shots looking sharp and having the areas that you want in focus. So one thing to note here is if you are using F1.8 just to get those bloody backgrounds, you don't have to go down that low in order to do that. You can definitely get background blur even at f4 if you do the other steps right. Now we do talk a lot more about aperture and choosing the right f number in our free class Pro Tricks for Pro Level Photos. If you haven't already done so, be sure to sign up to watch that. It's completely free to you and I promise you'll find it also oh, helpful. You'll find a link to it at the show notes for this episode at livesnaplove.com forward slash 15, or you can go directly to sign up for the class at lifesnaplove.com forward slash class. Let's move on now to the second tip I have for you, which is to keep in mind the minimum focusing distance. So the 50 millimeter lenses are not macro lenses and they need a bit of diff distance between the camera lens and the subject. So you want to be at least 45 centimeters away from the subject. If you're too close and you try and focus, you'll hear the focus motor of the lens. It starts whirring and clunking about and it can't really achieve focus. So if you hear this, take a step back because it could simply be that you're too close to the subject to get focus. Moving on now to tip number three, and that is to beware of your shooting position. So if you are using a cropped body camera and you most likely are if you're using this lens. Remember that the view through your viewfinder means everything's going to look closer than it actually is. So this kind of threw me for a little while because it, the 50 millimeter isn't a zoom lens, it's a prime, which means it only has that one focal length. If you want to get closer or further away from your subject, you have to physically do it. And I would always end up a little bit too close to my subject because I wasn't prepared for just how zoomed in everything would look. So just stand a little bit further back than you would to take in the scene by the naked eye. And that will give you enough room around your subject. Now, as a side note to this, the 50 millimeter focal length on a crop frame camera body makes an excellent portrait lens due to your distance from the subject and you'll get really pleasing background blur and it will slim the face ever so slightly. So it really is if a fantastic focal length for portraits on a crop frame camera. Okay, moving on now to number four, which is to use a high shutter speed. So one of the benefits of being able to use low aperture numbers such as f2.8 is that it enables you to use faster shutter speeds. So I rarely drop below one over 100 when hand holding my camera. And when it comes to photographing kids, I go much higher than that. If that's you, try and get a shutter speed of at least one over 200 more if they are more active. Now, again, another side note here, you'll be much better cranking up the ISO to get the shutter speed you need rather than being tempted to use f1.8 unless you're really, really sure of your focusing skills and working out your depth of field. Now, I understand that you might be worried about introducing noise by using a higher ISO number, but don't be too concerned. It's much better to have an in-focus image with a little noise that is fixable in processing, then have a soft image due to motion blur, which isn't fixable. Now I will link to a blog post that has some tips and tricks for keeping the noise down in your images over on the show notes for this episode. Again, you'll find that at lifesnaplove.com forward slash 15. So let's do a quick recap since we're over halfway through our tips. So the first was don't use f1.8 just because you can. 
Keep in mind that minimum focusing distance and make sure you're about 45 centimeters away from your subject. Watch your shooting position and don't start off too close and watch that edges edges of the frame so don't make sure you're not cropping off little bits of body parts that you're not meant to be. Use a high enough shutter speed to make sure that you don't get motion blur. So tip number five is to toggle your focus points. Now, this actually goes back a little bit to depth of field again. Remember that I said the depth of field can be so narrow when using your aperture wide or nearly wide open. It's better then to know exactly where you're focusing instead of letting the camera choose the focus point for you. In fact, it's actually always better to do it yourself. It just becomes even more crucial the shallower your depth of field is. So by choosing your own focus point, you will get much sharper images and get exactly the area of the scene that you want in focus. Number six, and this is an important one, the lens is actually sharper two stops down. So most lenses, and this includes the 50mm f1.8, regardless of whether it's Canon or Nikon or someone else's, are always slightly sharper when not used at their widest aperture. In other words, when you don't use them at f1.8. Now, where the sweet spot of the lenses can vary from lens to lens, but generally the sharpest point of your lens will be around f8. But we don't need to use f8. We don't need for everything in the frame from, you know, the center to the edges to be tack sharp all of the time. So I will find that just two stops So shooting at around f2.8 on that Canon or Nikon 50mm f1.8 will give you a really excellent level of sharpness, but still let you get enough light into your camera via the aperture and give you that blurry background. So again, it's another reason why I recommend shooting at f2.8 rather than f1.8. So let's move on now to the final tip I have for you, which is arguably the most important one out of all of these. And that is, it's not the gear that matters, it's the person holding it. You can take stunning images with your 50 millimeter F1.8. You just need to learn how to use it. Learning about light, how to expose correctly, how to use the available light to flatter your subject or light your subject in a more interesting way. Learning about composition. They will all have a much bigger impact on how your final images turn out, regardless of which lens or camera they were taken with. So spend some time learning about these things, about exposure, about light, about composition, so that you can create images with that wow factor. Now we do go into exactly what you need to do in our free class too. So remember, go sign up to watch that now. It's available right now for you to watch on demand. So go sign up for it at livesnaplove.com forward slash class. Okay, let's wrap this up by recapping those seven tips. So the first tip was to make sure that you don't shoot at f1.8 just because you can. Keep in mind the minimum focusing distance and stay at least 45 centimeters away from your subject. Watch your shooting position and remember that everything is going to look a little bit more zoomed in than it does with the naked eye if you're shooting on a crop frame. Use a high enough shutter speed to ah, high enough shutter speed to ensure that you don't get motion blur. Toggle your focus points so you know exactly where the focus is going to be landing on your image. Really important if you're using that wide apertures and that the lens is sharper two stops down. So don't shoot at f1.8. Again, shoot around f2.8 and you'll find that your lens is generally sharper at that aperture number anyway. And finally, it's not the gear that matters. It's the person holding it. So I hope you enjoyed these tips for making the most out of your 50 millimeter lens. Now, finally, before you go, if you'd be so kind, if you know someone who is struggling with photography, I really hope you'll share this podcast with them. Just grab a link for this specific episode or anyone that you'd find useful and text it to a friend. All right. Thank you again for hanging out with me and I will see you again soon. 
So that wraps up this week's episode of Photography Made Simple. I'll be back at the same time, same place next week. But if you want more, head on over to livesnaplove.com forward slash podcast, where you can find all the resources and the downloads mentioned, plus a whole lot more. Finally, if you enjoyed the podcast, please be sure to subscribe and that way you won't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next week. Thank you.